Avatar The Last Airbender is a Nickelodeon show that is cherished by many. First airing in 2005, it captivated audiences with its intriguing story, world-building, and coverage of serious topics. It wasn't like anything else you'd see on Nickelodeon. It would amass a gigantic following and become one of the most successful shows of all time. With this in mind, it's no surprise that it's had a fair amount of adaptations. So I'd like to look at a game made by one of my favorite childhood companies that I don't see many people talk about. This is AWE's Avatar The Last Airbender on PC. It came out in 2006, which was an interesting time for AWE. Just the year before, they released some of their best work with Lights, Camera, Pants, Bratz, Rock Angels, and their first Agatha Christie game. That one would also get a release on the Wii, which was a first for the company. <laughs> AWE. But after such a high point during their run, things took a shaky turn. Nighty Nightmare was very lackluster compared to the games before it, which made it easy to question the company's direction. But a few months later, they released their Avatar game. It contained elements that were similar to ones in Nighty Nightmare, but took a different approach. Now, as much as I love AWE, I didn't actually grow up with this one. There isn't a lot of information about it online either, but I have been warned. A few people have told me that this game is unforgivingly rage-inducing. So many gamers who grew up with it have repressed the memory because of the unadulterated frustration it caused them. So I guess we need to check it out. Let's get right into this. When we start, we're met with a very interesting take on the AWE logo. It can either be a sign of the awesomeness that awaits us, or the horrors of the trial we shall soon face. So after the show's intro, we get this cool menu. The whole story of this game is a highly condensed version of Avatar Book 1. So if you want to speedrun the entirety of Season 1, maybe this is an option. But we start by seeing Zuko, who's interrupted by Uncle Iroh, who brings him dire news. The dialogue is fully voice acted, so you get to hear all your favorite characters as you progress through this adventure. I have news, Prince Zuko, but you may not like it. Uncle, you have taught me that to be a great leader, I must remain focused and calm in all situations. Whatever the news is, I will abide by your teachings. Well, in that case, we have no idea where the Avatar is. But in case you're wondering where the Avatar is, we find out right away. Aang, Sokka, Katara, and Momo decide to take a rest, landing Aang's flying bison Appa. It's so amusing to see these characters in AWE's trademark style. But things take a turn when warriors from Kiyoshi Village show up to fight, believing them to be Fire Nation spies. To prove that he's actually the Avatar, Katara tells Aang what to do. Quick, Aang! Click the right mouse button to do your air scooter technique. So, do they know they're in a game, or...? Yeah, it always amuses me when characters work the controls into the dialogue. So the leader, Suki, tells them to meet her across a bridge in the village. Then we're able to explore. You control Aang in an overhead view and can ride on your air scooter by right-clicking. Those icons in the bottom corners will be relevant later. And look at him go! Okay, that's a goofy walk if I've ever seen one. So now you can explore the village and talk to its inhabitants. This is a promising first stage, and it looks like we'll have a massive world to explore. But make sure you've done all your adventuring before you cross the bridge. Because once you do, you can't go back. Look at me desperately trying to escape. No, I refuse to be locked out of your exploration zone. Let me go back. So then we're introduced to our first enemies that are trying to invade the village. We get to fight them for our tutorial. So we're introduced to our fighting mechanics, and they're a little weird. They aren't too bad for now, but just you wait. You'll see. To fight an enemy, you click on them with the left mouse button. The right mouse button will activate your air scooter, which can make you travel much faster. It's convenient because you walk very slowly. But using an ability weakens your energy bar, so you have to use your attacks sparingly. Right away, the controls are a little confusing because you simultaneously tell Aang to walk somewhere by clicking it, but you also tell him to attack by clicking an enemy. In some cases, if you're trying to walk past an enemy, you'll end up attacking instead and endangering yourself. Again, not too bad right now, but later stages will be relentless. Thankfully, your health and energy bar regenerate over time, so you can just run around the arena and wait for them to recharge. Just don't let yourself get cornered. There's no way out once that happens. You have to keep your distance and take out one enemy at a time. It's a slow process, but it's what you gotta do. So once they're all dead, Suki shows Aang to Avatar Kyoshi's favorite meditation spot. She also tells him to visit the Earth City of Omashu. But before then, we need to meditate. 
You'll be doing a lot of that once this game is over. Also, the animation isn't necessarily bad, but something about the way Aang is animated in this cutscene seems a little... off. Not sure why. Air Monks taught me that meditation is the best way to clear my mind and concentrate on what is truly important. I have to left-click all of the things that I keep thinking about to clear them out of my mind. Once all of my thoughts have been put aside, I can focus my mind on what is truly important. Maybe it's because he doesn't blink. That's freaky. So for the meditation stage, we need to click on all the thoughts that are clouding Aang's mind. They appear as images that float across the screen and we need to make them disappear. I wish it was this easy to make my bad thoughts disappear in real life. But hey, that could be a proper exercise. Whenever you're being plagued with bad thoughts, just envision yourself clicking each of them away. See if that works for you. But you win once you fill a meter at the top of the screen. This unlocks your air blast skill. It's a stronger move that pushes enemies back, but uses more of your energy. You have to use it right away because Zuko shows up to capture us. So you battle firebenders and it's amusing to send them flying away with your air blast, but this is where the controls start to get a little frustrating. You can only change your move by clicking on its respective icon at the bottom of the screen, left clicking for attacks you use with the left mouse button, and right clicking for ones you use with the right. This is inconvenient because you may need to switch an ability in the middle of a fight, but that leaves you open as you move the mouse to the bottom of the screen. With how many enemies the game likes to throw at you, you'll rarely have a comfortable opportunity to do so. Thankfully, for now, you have Sokka and Katara backing you up, and the enemies stay dead even if you die while fighting them, but here you have two choices. You can either fight through every enemy, which can get tedious because you have to kill them one at a time to avoid being overwhelmed, or you can try to run through them and take a ton of hits as you go. Get used to this formula, we'll be seeing it a lot. And for some reason, this big invisible space was keeping me from reaching Appa. That's because you have to go down this very specific invisible path if you want to reach him. Even though the text icon appears, nothing happens until you walk on this specific space. This can lead to confusion because you might assume Appa is unreachable. But once you board your flying bison, you get a completely different format. We're now in an overhead shooter where enemies are firing at us. You can shoot at them in return, but they still put up a good fight. You're locked where you are and you can't fly any higher or lower. Because of this, when they shoot trajectory ammo at you, you have no choice but to take the hit because it'll follow you to the side of the screen. Come on, AWE. You have to fight through five waves, and they can go on for a long time. It kind of drags in all honesty. The power-ups are absolutely necessary, too. You can shield yourself, use rapid fire, or just wipe out all the enemies on the screen. Then once you beat all five waves, you have to face a boss, and it's so much easier than any of the enemy swarms. I also have to mention that this feels like a reskin of the overhead shooter stage from Nighty Nightmare. You even start the opening cutscene in a weird corner of the screen, just like in Nighty Nightmare. And even the mechanic of having to fight one enemy at a time to avoid being overwhelmed is similar to the first Spongebob stage in that game. But after this, it's on to Omashu. Aang is excited to be here because he remembers it very fondly, but the guards don't give him a very warm welcome. They bring us to see the king, who totally isn't Aang's childhood friend Boomy, but he recognizes Aang as the avatar and insists that he complete a series of tests. To make sure he goes through with it, Sokka and Katara are given creeping crystal rings. This means they'll be slowly engulfed in crystal that grows around them. Such a cruel and oddly disturbing torture method. Now, I was looking forward to this stage because this was one of my favorite episodes as a kid. I remember wanting to play an adaptation of the trials Aang completed in it. So I guess this is a dream come true. Except not really. Rather than facing the waterfall obstacle to retrieve a lunchbox key, we just fight through a massive onslaught of enemies until one of them drops it. Again, lead them away and take them out one at a time. Get used to it. And between every trial, you see Sokka and Katara get increasingly covered by crystal. Truly a fate worse than death. But for the next one, you have to play with the king's pet, Flopsy. Now we get an interesting change of pace. Flopsy is chasing Aang, who's flying on his air scooter, and you have to guide him so he doesn't hit any rocks as he flies away. It's really easy. But for the final challenge, we must fight one of the king's soldiers. Aang chooses to fight the king himself, and we get thrown into a duel. Then this happens. Ow! Aang recognizes the attack as one Boomy used to use, but still doesn't make the obvious connection. Look, even as a kid I saw this twist coming. So now you can use your shield technique to block it. It's hard to get the hang of at first. 
You have to use your energy bar wisely as you utilize both the shield and one of your attacks. You'll likely die a lot as you try to get the hang of this. I got really tired of hearing Aang over enunciate aha. Aha! 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 But I will say one thing, it feels very satisfying when you win. Then afterwards, the king tasks you with guessing his name. Aang is able to figure out the king is his old friend Boomy, so his friends are freed. Boomy then explains the reason behind the tests, telling Aang that he must master the four elements and defeat Fire Lord Ozai. So we set off on this grand adventure, and guess what happens next? Yep, it's another long overhead shooter section. At least the background is cool. This one wasn't as hard for me as the first, but it still dragged on for a while. But once we land, we find that the Fire Nation has absolutely desecrated this forest. We then hear someone call for help and go to find them. But first, we must battle through canyon crawlers. Again, you can either fight them one at a time or you can try to run through them. They make very human grunts when attacked. The air scooter can help you fly by if you don't want to fight them all, but whichever choice you make, it's going to be a real process. You have to fight these really big ones too, but it's fun to send them flying. Once you're through, you meet this old man who recognizes Aang as the Avatar. He says his village is in danger and they need our help. Then it's back to fighting the enemies so you can make your way to the village. I mean, I guess it's fun to see how you can utilize your different abilities, but this is also where the controls get a little annoying. You won't have a break in the battle, so you really don't have any good opportunities to switch your moveset. Make sure you know what you want to do going in. But once we're in the village, the old man tells us the spirit known as Heibai is attacking the village. With winter solstice approaching, the line between the natural world and spirit world is thinning. Heibai is getting stronger, so we have to stop it. We go out to face it and Sokka tries to help, but he gets picked up and carried away. Now we follow Heibai in a reversal of the Flopsy stage. Once again, it's really easy. Just avoid rocks and chase the monster. But once we're done, we find the totem of the nature spirit. This brings Aang into the spirit world where he's approached by these guys. We learn that Heibai is corrupted because the Fire Nation soldiers scorched the land in their battle with the Earth Kingdom. We must give Heibai hope by convincing it that the Avatar has returned. The soldiers tell Aang not to harm it, but he still has to convince it he's the Avatar. Then we get another meditation stage. Eh, Aang's unblinking eyes are watching us again. Then we have to run through the empty village until Heibai appears. It's honestly kind of tense and builds up anticipation. But like the soldiers said, we can't hurt it. We just run around and have fun until the icon in the center of the screen flashes. Then we click it and show the beast just who we are. This turns it back into a panda, as it finally feels content about the future. But now we have another problem. Aang must speak with Avatar Roku, the previous Avatar, but he has to reach his temple when the winter solstice begins. This requires him to reach an island in the heart of the Fire Nation. But Zuko is hot on his tail, despite his banishment by the Fire Lord. So then we get another flying section, but it's slightly different this time. We can't fight back, but we have to avoid ships that are shooting at us from below. It's kind of creative how they shook up the formula like this. I don't entirely mind this stage, but sometimes the attacks can be unavoidable. You just try to endure until it's over. But when we reach the island, Zuko is confused because Admiral Zhao led him through the blockade. Uncle Iroh explains this is because Zhao expects Zuko to lead him to Aang. As a result, Zuko tells Iroh to steer the ship away while he pursues the Avatar himself. Then it's back to the game. We get a really amusing stage with this volcanic scenery. We work our way through firebenders, either fighting them or trying to squeeze through them with our big shield. Then we head inside. We continue this process in this massive temple, avoiding fire sages. I like how they utilize different enemies from the show. But you just kind of endure until you reach a staircase. Then who should confront us other than the legendary Zuko himself? And so begins the fight we've all been waiting for. And it's kind of underwhelming. Look, he's just kind of standing in the corner waiting for me to come up and fight. Then it's a very long process of just throwing moves back and forth like this. Thankfully, he doesn't regain his health whenever you die, so it doesn't go on for as long as it probably would otherwise. I'm extremely grateful for that feature. But after this, you reach the shrine and summon Roku. He warns us of a comet once harnessed by the ancient Fire Lord Sozin. It's expected to return, and Ozai intends to channel its energy once again. We have to stop him by learning the four elements by summer's end. 
As such, we must go see a master of waterbending. Meanwhile, Zhao finds Zuko outside, but Roku shows up and sets everything ablaze. Now you must flee the temple. You fight your way through, or run like a coward, aka Lucy, and fly away. Then we're brought back into an overhead view during a storm. The game kinda tricks you into thinking this is going to be your next stage, but you actually land on an island for the night. On one hand, I'm glad we don't have another overhead shooter, but on the other, it would have been really cool to have one during a rainstorm. But for now, we have to fight through pirates. They aren't too hard, just tedious. But Sokka and Katara start to feel a little unwell. But hey, we found a waterbending scroll. Then this guy Bato shows up. He's an old friend of theirs. But their sicknesses soon become overwhelming and they collapse. Bato then sends Aang to find a herbalist in the nearby swamp. But the swamp happens to be infested with croco beasts. Thankfully, the scroll we found gives us the ability to shroud ourselves in a mist. With it, you can see the field of vision the croco beasts have. I gotta say, they're a little intimidating. I really don't want to be seen by those things. But you follow these signs and try to keep your circle from overlapping with any of theirs. This is a reused mechanic from Nighty Nightmare, which you needed to utilize during stealth sections. It's a neat little way to shake things up, but it's a lot harder to manage than you might think it is. You can't even let a sliver of your circle touch an enemies. And whenever you die past a certain point, the stage will reset you right in front of an enemy, which will then attack you before you can respond. Is that really necessary? But once we reach the herbalist, we see Zuko and Iroh again. Iroh explains that Zhao has commissioned the finest archers to hunt Aang down, so Zuko comes up with a plan. Sorry. Hm. I couldn't help myself. Okay, that was unsettling. So back with Aang, the herbalist tells him to collect frozen wood frogs, which Sokka and Katara need to suck on. Hey, it's science. So then we get another stealth section where we have to collect frogs. It's a little easier than before, but once we're done here, the archers show up. This leads to our capture and subsequent taunting from Admiral Zhao. But guess who shows up to save us? Oh hey Zuko, nice mask. Now we get to escape by fighting enemies while Zuko backs us up. It's cool, but over pretty quickly. Zhao then orders an archer to shoot Zuko, but Aang helps him get away. Then they share somewhat of a tender moment. The worst part about being over a hundred years old is that I miss all of my friends. Before the war began, my friend Kuzan and I used to get into lots of trouble together. He was one of the best friends I ever had, and he was from the Fire Nation, like you. Do you think that if we had known each other back then, we would have been friends too? we bring the frogs to Sokka and Katara, instantly healing them. Then it's off to the north- are you kidding me, another overhead shooter? Yep, you just fight through the enemies until you reach the North Pole. And I'm also not a big fan of the fact that the enemies sound like actual wounded animals whenever you kill them. But then we see Zuko again. Zhao comes to speak with him, having commissioned his crew to send to the North Pole. Meanwhile, Aang, Katara, and Sokka are greeted by Chief Arnook and his daughter Yue. They introduce us to Master Paku, the most powerful waterbender in the world. Now we must train with him. But before we get to that, prepare yourselves. What you are about to witness might be one of the single ungodliest boss fights I have ever endured in any game I have ever played. I'm not even exaggerating. Ready? Let's do this. Right away, it's up to you as the player to figure out what you have to do. Haku blocks all of your attacks, and whenever you die, the only hint you get is to wait for an opening. This might mislead you and make you think you'll have an opening, but you'll just be running around forever until you die with this mentality. You have to use your mist to disappear from his vision, then you can attack him. But then... He immediately kills you. So what you have to do is activate your mist, attack him with your air blast, then immediately shield yourself. This means moving the mouse all around the screen at lightning speed. But remember your energy meter? Yeah, all of these moves will put a dent in it, and you might not have enough energy to use the shield. That means you have to spend a good chunk of the fight running around the course and waiting for your energy to regenerate while this guy shoots at you the entire time. 
Even if you know what to do, it's still extremely difficult because you have to have ninja reflexes to hit all the buttons as quickly as can possibly be done by a human. And remember when I mentioned how previous bosses didn't regain their health after you died? Well, not anymore. If you die at any point during this fight, even if you've knocked Paku down to his final hit, you have to start all over from the very beginning. This is beyond merciless. Now I sort of get what they were going for. They might be trying to emulate how the true Avatar needs to balance speed while using their energy sparingly, which is all well and good, but come on. Hangs the Avatar here. I'm just trying to have fun playing a game. You want me, the player, to be the Avatar? But I guess after this boss fight, I'm ready to take on any opponent. But after this, you hear that hundreds of Fire Nation ships are coming toward you. So Aang must take down the command ship with the skill Arctic Waters. This freezes things. Now you get to sneak around the ship. It's fun to freeze the enemies, but then you freeze the engine and Zhao approaches you, accompanied by this guy with a big hammer weapon. He's the next boss fight. It's not as hard as Paku's, but the hammer is nearly impossible to avoid. Once again, you have to manage your energy as you freeze him, attack him, and raise your shield. You spend a good chunk of the fight just waltzing around the ship to regenerate. And thankfully, he doesn't regain health after you die. So once we're done with him, we enter the home stretch. According to Yue, the Moon Spirit is helping Master Paku and the others hold the invaders back. She also introduces us to a garden where the presence of the Moon and Ocean Spirits can be felt. We then have to meditate to ask them for help, but Zuko shows up and Katara has to fight him. We don't actually get to see it. Clearly this meditation minigame is far more entertaining than that, right? But Zhao shows up and finds Zuko already defeated. Then Aang wakes up, warning Zhao not to kill the moon spirit, which has manifested as a fish in the pond. Despite the very convincing arguments, Zhao kills it anyway. Ah yes, AWE's usual creepy sound effect. So Aang turns into perfect chaos and gives us a new stage. This time, we're going around in the ocean and destroying warships. They shoot at us, but it doesn't affect us. This is pretty fun, though it does bear a resemblance to the giant plankton stage from Nighty Nightmare. Only there's a lot less we can do in this one. You just go around and destroy all the ships, and then it's over. Literally, this is the last playable stage. Okay then. So Yue says she can save the Moon Spirit because when she was born, the Moon Spirit saved her and gave her some of its life. Now she must give it back. And look at Katara in the corner here. This is totally me by now. What I find amusing is how Yue's sacrifice kind of comes out of nowhere with all the development she had in the show taken out. But the day is saved and Zuko escapes. Now are you ready for the ending? I sure wasn't. Here it is. I'm so sorry about Yue. She was braver than I ever could have been. But thank you, sis. Well, at least the spirits are safe, along with the water trunk. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Zuko escaped. He'll probably be looking for us again soon. Something tells me we won't have to worry about him for a while. I heard Katara gave him a pretty good butt kicking. <laughs> are you starting to feel a little bit more like the Avatar? I couldn't have done any of this if it wasn't for my friends. <laughs> Including you, Momo. Okay then, so that does it for the AWE Avatar game. So, what do we think about this one? Your heroes did not meet the goal. Well, I wouldn't say this is one of AWE's better works, but let's go over some things I liked. The stages are well designed, and it's nice to see so many aspects of the show adapted. The concept is also really cool, almost a full video game adaptation of Avatar Book 1. It can get creative at times too. The story is also good, but I mean, it's Avatar. Of course the story is good. But aside from that, we do have some downsides. With uncomfortable controls and repetitive stages, the levels can sometimes feel like a chore to get through. And while I appreciate that they tried to stay mostly true to the source material, I wish there were more sections like Kiyoshi Village that let you explore and have fun with each environment. The game tried to fit in as much of the story as it could, and I think that came at the cost of adding additional features that would have been cool to have. I really like how the other AWE games, even when they're adapted from a source material, have their own memorable little aspects. In this, I feel like you'd have just as much enjoyment, if not more enjoyment, if you just, you know, watched the show. 
Though I can't say the game is entirely forgettable, you'll have nightmares about that Master Paku fight for years to come. Though I will say, if AWE was commissioned to adapt the entire first season of Avatar, I can't entirely blame them for not having room for originality. They had a lot of bases to cover in as short of a time frame as they could manage. Avatar just isn't a series you can easily condense. Important stuff is going to be watered down if you try to shorten it, so this was a big responsibility from the start. I still love AWE and think they have an amazing catalog to choose from, but not all of them can be winners. At the same time, I don't mind if other people like this game. Some might appreciate the challenge, or they just enjoy seeing one of their favorite shows get adapted. If you like this game, I'm glad. But we still have a ton of AWE games left to check out, and like I said on Twitter, I do intend to cover them all. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Twitch, which are linked in the description below, and tune in to our next installment. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.